Uh, well, it just happens to be <clears throat> um, Pagan uh, Christmas uh, Weekend 2013, uh, and it is uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, December 21st, 2013. <clears throat> uh, happy Holidays! Or holidays to everyone uh, that these this time of year is applicable to. Happy and all, Festivus for the rest of us. That's right. Happy Festivus for the rest of us. Happy Kwanzaa. I'm not going to go through uh, all the religions. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that uh, politically correct because I don't like to pander to people. And, but then again, I'm not right wing. Happy so Cuba. I know Happy Holidays upsets the Bill O'Reilly, the Republicans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that that poor uh, Salvation Army woman in Arizona got slapped in the face as she was ringing her bell uh, and saying Happy Holidays. Some right wing nut slapped her in the face. Ooh. I hope she kicked her ass. That's not <clears throat> nice. But uh, please, people, nice. go online, type in Mega Life 21, and type in, uh, you know, the Christmas lie, and listen to it. Listen to it, please. You'll learn something. That You'll learn... What? That wasn't very Christian. You'll learn the truth. The face. You'll learn the truth about Christmas. The actual biblical truth about Christmas, which makes people more of a Christian who... Uh, Love the Christmas lie uh, program than uh, than all the all the the nuts out there on Fox News. Don't forget, Santa Claus is white. Uh, Santa Claus is a fictitious character created uh, so uh, by the retail industry in America. So you can they can get you to part with all of your money. Yeah, let's assume for a moment. Even money you don't have. Let's assume. Yeah. Assume for a moment. Yeah. That uh, <clears throat> Christmas was the birth of Christ. Jesus. Well, he well. Let's he, assume that he wasn't born in December. Let's right. assume let's that. Let's assume he was. What the hell does Santa Claus have to do with that? And what the hell do, do, do pagan traditions like the Christmas tree have to and do? The with? Log, and the Yule log. And the Yule log. And the holly. And holly and uh, all that it came from paganism um <clears throat> and and didn't jesus say do not revere anyone's birthday do not no, he didn't say that you did it wasn't done but he didn't tell people to celebrate his birthday either he, he didn't have to it wasn't done birthday it only became for the big boys like the kings herod and pharaoh so the, the general they liked to make themselves bigger. Well, because they, they wanted to be godlike. That's correct. Uh, but birthday parties were not no. celebrated amongst the main the mainstream earthlings. For instance, the nativity story has it that the three kings from the east came and gave gifts to Jesus while he was in the manger. I heard he wasn't even born in a manger. Well, that didn't happen. The kings came a couple of weeks later. But the gifts involved. It wasn't a matter of the individuals give gifts to individuals. Gifts were given to important people. Kings, etc. And that's why they brought their frankincense and myrrh and etc. And whatever, Gold yeah. and silver, whatever the hell they had. Because he was a, a future king. Not of this world, but a king. A king. So they brought it, and uh, you know I'm, I can't wait movies. till it's over because the these Christmas uh, movies I don't I don't God forbid I don't watch them, but other people in the house do. It makes me sick. It makes me nauseous. They are more nauseating and more hey. and they're more brain excuse me and more brainwashing than ever before. They use the word Christmas and Merry Christmas like. Like almost every other minute, and they and they get so sappy and 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 hammy and emotional. Oh, Christmas, oh, Wait Christmas. Wait a second. And, and the whole movie involves giving gifts. The whole movie is about 
about people receiving Wait presents. Wait a second. It's retail brainwashing the in America. The most popular Christmas movie at this time of the year is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Which was created by a, uh, a retail store chain. I, I, I think it might have been Macy's way back in the day. And all the songs that were written for Christmas. All the songs that were written for Christmas were created. Everything, all this was created by retail to get you to part with all your money. Hmm? Rudolph. Hey, Rudolph is will make perfect venison for my hellfire. Yeah. He's another Bill Morrow. For my hell for my oh, hell. you would shoot Bambi too. For my hellfire chili. Let me finish. Anyway, it's bullshit, and, and, and I know who's behind it. I know who, who controls the retail industry, just like who controls the central banks. I know, I know the whole game. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry for not doing proper introduction to the show. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. We are coming to you live and recorded from the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And I will formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 and also the second uh, best interrupter in the world. The first is William H. Morrow III, who I will be with later on when my co-host has his lunch. Okay. Yes. New format too today. Uh. Oh, I'm, I'm going to pipe him aboard with my authentic bosun's whistle. Aboard the progressive liberal starship. Ah, welcome aboard, uh, the, the the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. The name of the starship. Aboard the. Progressive Liberal Starship. That's the name of it? I've been saying it every week for months now. Progressive, pro progressive, progressive Liberal, liberal starship. starship. Well, you want me to go well, back to saying... got a name like the Enterprise. You want me to go back to saying uh, a, a pirate ship? No, I want to give it a name like the Enterprise. Starship Censored. Newsletter Censored. Censored! Starship Censored. There you named go. after the newsletter. There you go. Which happens to be hot off the, the press, the, our new issue. That's right, you can go listen to it. Hot it's off... Too damn... Hot off the pancake griddle. You can go subscribe to it. Yeah, sure. But if you're too damn cheap, go listen to it. Then maybe you'll subscribe to it. Yeah, it's all... You know? Oh. Don't give people... No, 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 they deserve it. Don't give them... Don't give them an option. Of course not. But if they don't get a a a a a a a, 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 a listen or a see, listen, they got to get a buy. Hey, use use a use a a marketing sense in your head. Sales and marketing. Use a little skill. Uh, they get they get they can get a free sample. Of uh, issue of censored called uh, free market capitalism is dead at, oh, the, yeah, at go yeah go, go to it. go to the um, our uh, progressive internet talk radio uh, station and at the top there is a printable past issue a sample issue that is free called free market capitalism is dead print it out and you have a complete issue of censored as a sample. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm telling you, if it, was, if it wasn't for me, you know, we'll be friggin' uh, giving every stumble bum uh, a friggin' mansion in Upper Saddle River here. You gotta, you gotta know marketing, man. Oh yeah, then that may die, maybe then they'll have the money to pay for it. Well, I like to <laughs> wish everyone uh, that I know a, a happy pagan Christmas Festivus happy Festivus for the rest of us and uh, happy holidays in general but most of all I want to 
uh, wish happy holidays to my uh, fast growing uh, Facebook group called Progressive Discussions. I would like to say hello and uh, salute my the group and the, the Facebook page, both of them. Progressive Discussions with my lucky Irish Blackthorn Shillelagh. I salute you, group. All right. Cool. Pay homage. So this this special holiday show, even though I'm not going to mess up my hair with any stupid hats this year, is uh, dedicated to the f Facebook group and Facebook page, Progressive Discussions. Wonderful. And it's uh, we have quite a captive audience what now. What was the Progressive Discussion yesterday? Okay. There's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of activity going on, but as time goes by, there's even more. Okay, here is how much <coughs> taxpayers <coughs> are subsidizing fast food CEO pay. A widely <coughs> exploited loophole allows companies to deduct the cost of performance-based executive pay from their tax bills, how, how ridiculous that sounds, that loophole is costing taxpayers big time. Mm -hmm. In 2012, here are the numbers. McDonald's, 11,679,239 dollars. Okay. Uh, KFC, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, they're owned by the same company. I'm not sure if it's still Pepsi, PepsiCo, because I know they used to own it. Uh, their uh, big fat loophole, $17,107,281. Wendy's, uh, $720,491. Burger King. Four hundred and sixty two thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars. Domino's as well, that's in, pretty cheap. Yeah, well they're, they're like paupers compared to uh yeah. McDonald's. That's the uh, CEO is you know, he's uh, ain't he complaining? <laughs> uh, Domino's pizza, Domino's, Domino's. Three million nine hundred and ninety thousand and eighty two dollars. Dunkin' Donuts, this is the last one, Dunkin' Donuts. Seven thousand six hundred and eighty six thousand dollars two hundred and thirty seven and this this information you sure that wasn't seven million seven million I said yeah. seven million. no you said seven thousand seven I'm sorry <coughs> let me do it again big a big difference because I, I, I'm trying to get it I'm trying to get it in before I'm interrupted Dunkin Donuts seven million six hundred and eighty six thousand mm. Two hundred and thirty-seven dollars for Dunkin' Donuts. The CEO pay. This information came from the Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. So, man, these CEOs sure think they're that important. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with redistribution of income upward. Blood sucking. Okay. Blood sucking, taking, sucking the lifeblood from mainstream, the middle class, the poor, and siphoning. Everything lock, stock, and barrel, not trickle down, because that, that was a lie. Siphoning everything up, lock, stock, and barrel. And conservative Republicans love that, have no complaint with it, but God forbid, God forbid, we should give food stamps to people who need them. Uh, that is okay. That is in my next readings. Well, get on with it. I got two more for this monologue. Okay, a person making five hundred thousand dollars per year in America pays about ten cents a day for food stamps. Okay, now this bothers Republicans. Oh yeah, but not paying out a hundred billion dollars in corporate welfare. Now that doesn't bother them. Not a wink. Not a wink. Not a stinking wink. All right. Now, millions of children have less to eat this holiday season 
due to cuts in SNAP, food stamps, SNAP. But conservatives are uh, very happy about that food stamp cut. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Duck Dynasty star gets suspended and conservatives lose their heads. <laughs> yeah, we'll be discussing that. Yeah, okay, now, uh, that's it, but how about the CEO pay tax loophole subsidizing? You know, the, people wake up and start caring about what's going on in your country here in the United States. I mean, you got, I mean, are you, are you, every time you vote for a Republican, you're voting in favor of giving away your tax dollars to the uh, fat cats and corporations and 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 you're paying the tax burden you know for these moochers that are not paying and not only are they mooching and not paying their fair share in taxes but they're also a bunch of crooks because you, the politicians you elect the conservatives you elect and maybe some Democrats, they're just literally giving all this free money, corporate welfare, uh, and, and they're like uh, the Reverend Dr. Bill said, they are re, it's all part of the redistribution of wealth upward. scheme. Upward. Upward. Siphoning upward. That's okay. Okay. That's all right. It's okay. In their book. Right. So they, and the people who keep voting for them get sucked into that smaller government <coughs> thing. Yeah, when they say smaller government, they're talking about getting rid of the programs for the needy, but not for those who don't need. Correct. Subsidies and grants and tax breaks tax loopholes bailouts. all those who already have Wall Street bailouts it's, yeah. it's never a Main Street bailout no never because that'll make people lazy so so it's okay to make the rich lazy you know uh, that's okay yeah because their money makes money for them they don't work for the, the money they don't earn their money well you, that's okay you believe the Fox News bullshit about that but it's all right for for poor children and even mainstream children to have less to eat, to have less on their dining room table. To be food insecure. Uh, so corporations can, can get a hundred billion dollars of your tax dollars. And pay their CEOs big bucks. And, and it's all corporate welfare, yeah. but heaven forbid the poor should need any help. Right. Interesting. Right. And, and, and those people who don't like that kind of giving to the poor. They call themselves Christians. Well, there is a nice, a nice um, um, supply of biblical verses that are at the Progressive Discussions Facebook page, not the group. Uh, all you have to do is click on the, um, the front cover. The new front cover you click on it and you'll, you can just read at the top it says how to defeat a conservative and below that are all the Bible verses that prove that God is very far very far away from being a conservative right-winger <laughs> and it, it, you'll you'll read all the Bible but, verses that proves them wrong that they know nothing about but, the God of the Bible but but they are rewriting the Bible. Why? Because they say so. so? Maybe because they say so. Yeah. Why? 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 Well, why? A textbooks. They come out of Texas, and they do not uh, tell the truth. So they've wrapped that up in these years. So maybe in years to come, the only Bibles to be available might be theirs. Expurgated. Uh, they better read the last uh, um, a paragraph of the Book of Revelations to find out that what they're doing is a is a pretty big sin. You think they care? You, you think know, they care? You, you know what? As long as they can use the religion as a cloak and people believe it, they don't care. They're using whether they're not really. They're Christian using or not. Christianity as like a, a, a front, a smokescreen. Right. It's like a, like a criminal operation using a front 
So you think, and you know, well, or what? like the mafia giving money to the Catholic Church. And if you watch your local news, they'll never tell you what's really going on. They'll just tell you what Kim Kardashian is doing or Miley Cyrus or whatever. Is she twerking again? No, you know what I mean? They, all these uh, diversions and distractions are going on. Oh, by the way, before we sink our teeth into these readings, because I got here late, uh, there's a bit of news that I'm not sure if the, the American media is supposed to televise something about this, but this Sunday, the largest protest in the history of the country of Thailand ah. is supposed to take place because, and I'm so embarrassed to admit this, uh -oh. American corporations, uh, I mean, uh, the leaders of Thailand, the, the people that control the Thai government has sold out their people to U.S. corporations and the people are fuming and there's going to be a humongous uh, public protest about this this Sunday tomorrow so I just wanted to make that statement and we'll see if the US media mentions anything about it probably not but also the US government uh, CIA etc is probably geared up the Thai government to take care of those things like we did over here with Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, but how we neutered them. Yeah, but people over here, there in America, their people are pussies. In other countries, they'll they'll friggin they'll they'll die for they'll, things. They'll start a revolution. You kidding well, me? They'll start does. a revolution. You see the res <laughs> the revolution in Egypt. What did it re result in? The Mo Muslim Brotherhood taking over. That's what happens. What do you suggest? Being passive and doing nothing? I suggest never letting the corporations get their hands into the stuff in the first place. Well, this is why uh, F, uh, FDR first started the... Uh, he's the one that started the concept of regulations. Who started... He's regulations for a long time. Who started corporate regulations? We started regulations when the corporations began. J.P. Morgan had it had to. If a corporation in in the beginning, when corporations, if a corporation did not do its business in the public interest, its charter was revoked. Sounds good to me. Yeah, well, it ain't don't, it don't happen anymore because they they paid off everybody. Whatever, but that's how it is today. That's why they get away with anything they want. And the people are idiots. And now they have all kinds of power. Hey, you want to be smart, America? Get your news from the internet. That's what I like about that banner of all, all those the guys wearing the uh, the anonymous mask, and it says they were holding up a sign, and it says we uh, don't worry, we get our news from the internet. We are from the internet, something like that. Don't worry, we are from the internet. Very uh, well dressed men too. The internet held the promise to being able to give us real freedom and connection with people all around the world, but etc. This, but but the, you know what? But they're spying on our porn now. None of their damn business if people watch porn in their in their own homes. So that they can so that they can neuter you. Uh, what about this trans Pacific Partnership. partnership that's supposed to take away your internet freedom I hear it it takes away our nation's sovereignty we will not be able to control our laws and regulations if the corporate if a law let's say a law uh, we don't like a chemical that's uh, a certain corporation is going to produce it's very dangerous it kills people whatever okay we can't stop that the corporation will sue us for all the profits they will lose because of that. So um, they want to they want to make it uh, like a Ponzi scheme, like a win-win. They no, want no matter what happens, they want to win and get their way. They will no it nullifies our constitution, our sovereignty as a nation, etc. They are in charge completely. With the rules, regulations, and laws, and etc., etc., etc. So they're they are. And guess what? What? 
the uh, the uh, 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 trade involved will take away our jobs just like NAFTA did. And and the, and, and the Republicans will still tell you, hey, you lazy moocher, go get a job. That's and right. there will be no jobs. Well, three. There, there aren't any jobs. Three to 20 people now, now apply for every job that is available. Huh? How three many? Three to 20 Three to people. 20. Indicating that there are no jobs. And guess what? All the jobs that are gone, they ain't coming back. Well, then how come um, Republicans are saying, hey, you lazy bum, go get a job? How come they keep on, they're still saying they Get it? away with it. What do you mean, why, why do they do but it? But it doesn't exist. Just like their, ver doesn't stop just like their version of the Bible doesn't exist. Correct. Just like their version of how life and government is supposed to be doesn't exist. And that human beings existed with a dinosaur and that the world is only 6,000 years old. None of these things exist, are, but they get away with it on Fox News. What are they going to say next, that the world is really flat? They are called flat earthers. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they didn't like Galileo, the right-wingers. We're talking about the old Catholic Church. They did not like Copernicus. They, they couldn't do anything about Isaac Newton because he was in England, had the, the Church of England at that time, I think, the Protestants. You know, but, you know, they didn't like uh, Martin Luther. They, they, didn't, they hate science. Because conservatives do not like progress. They do not believe in it. Progress. They, they believe in tradition. They're anti-progress. Maybe that's why liberals are using the word progressive nowadays. No, they're using that because the liberal word has been demonized so well, well by since, the right but wing. But since the right wing is anti-progress, a person who is progressive is for progress. Correct. Yeah, I'm just trying to make logic out of it. Progr yeah. Anti-progress, you're a right winger. But, li but liberal held that... Uh, idea before. Well, the, me the media allowed the, the right wing through Correct. ample face time to demonize the word liberal. Everything they do, all their, all their propaganda, uh, Fox News, whatever, is allowed by the American media and you never see an interview from uh, with a Barry Sanders. Bernie. I'm sorry, Bernie Sanders, a uh, uh, senator from Vermont, uh, the, the person who dummied up a long time ago, Al Franken. I don't Got Al, an email from him last night. Al, Al Frankenberry. Why? Does he want money? Yeah, yeah but, exactly. But we never hear from him. <laughs> what the hell do you expect? I, we you know when you'll hear from him? When he's running again. Hey, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, our own in New Jersey here, our own uh, Senator uh, Robert Menendez, I read their material online. They have a lot to say, a lot of great things to say. And they they pull no punches, but you know, I mean, we pull the we punch the hardest cuz you know, we're we're not uh we don't we don't have we don't need corporate campaign contributions, so we don't care. But we never hear them on the US media mm -hmm. being interviewed. There's no FaceTime from the US media. Other people have bigger megaphones. But if you're if you're a Rush Limbaugh or whoever, and you're right wing, you get plenty of FaceTime. Yeah. So good, sizable, one good reading before your lunch. Because it is the holiday special show, and you know, we had to, uh, I got here late, that's what killed us. Yeah. Canada's highest court struck down the country's anti-prostitution laws on Friday. Oh. Talk about progressive. That's progressive. It's a woman's body. She can do what she wants with it. A victory for sex workers who had argued that a ban on brothels and other, uh, and other measures made their profession more dangerous. Well, yeah, like in Nevada, you have like the health department, cert, you know, giving them the the certification uh, <laughs> approval uh, license, and you know they're they're they have to get examined quite often and all that stuff. Yeah, and I believe they pay taxes. 
Yeah. Thank you. Pay taxes and, uh, you know, they like a restaurant gets a seal of approval from the health department. So does the uh, the bordellos yeah. in, in a legalized prostitution uh, The ruling area. drew criticism from the conservative government <laughs> and religious leaders. The court ruling in a case brought by three women in the sex trade struck down all three of Canada's prostitution related laws. Bans on keeping a brothel, making a living from prostitution and street soliciting. Right. The ruling will not take effect immediately, however. Oh boy. Because the court gave Parliament a year to respond with new legislation and said the existing laws would remain in place until then. So these uh, right-wing Canadian politicians, political leaders, they uh, they want to mix church and state, obviously. Well, if you want to mix, mix church and state, you have government interfere or religion interfere with government or society, then why don't, why don't they pay taxes? They should pay taxes. The, re the religious uh, voice of conservatism. First of all, religious laws do not belong in secular laws. Absolutely. That's number one. Absolutely not. No. Okay. And uh, laws against prostitution are religious. Yeah, the and their criticisms of prostitution are religious. And and Same the magic with and the magic uh, statement about religion is. Uh, if no one can prove that their God exists, then their basis is not uh, uh, is they not have no basis. is not proven on. F there's no proof. It's not based on fact. They have no fact to back them but up. They. It's only faith is uh, is like wishful thinking. It's like hope. But even so, we have in America a First Amendment. Yes, which has a a wall of separation between religion and the government. Yes, yeah. you are free to have any religion you want, but you are not free to in any way, shape or form, by law or etc., push that religion on anybody else. Oh, the, the multicultural uh, United States of America is, uh, has all types of religions within it. Even atheists, you have, they have no right, no, they have a right to their opinion. They have no right to push their religion and their God on other people. And they usually don't. They don't have that It right. is the right wing who does. But the right wing still cannot prove that their God and their version of interpretation is the truth. It, see, it didn't seem to stop it throughout history. Exists. Okay that kind of idea. Yeah, well that's like a fascist uh, way of running the world which is uh, what they what they want with the corporate plutocracy. They Totalitarian. Totalitarian. Fascism. The definition. Yeah. Well never Corporations goes. are married to the state. Right. Period. It has nothing to do with anything else. That's totalitarianism. When hierarchy for the top-down ruling dictator that's yeah, like when they, when they say uh, when they when they say anything, when they say anything, they say it because uh, they can, and because uh, they don't. They also they don't have to listen to anyone else's opinion. They, it's a dictatorship, like you yeah. said. You know, uh, it's, it's because I said so. There you go. Not because I have any proof to back. There you go. Back up and my if I happen to have the power. To enact my thoughts, all well and good. See, that's how it's done. Well, if you if you sucker the uh, army, the police, and the national guard to back you up, and and meanwhile these people, they come from a lot of them. Most of them come from middle class uh, families and poor families, and so they're they're uh, hassling, they're harassing the very people that they come from. When when there's protesters on. Uh, Wall Street, and they're harassing and, and mistreating them, let's say, 
they're in a sense they're mistreating the very background that they came from doesn't seem to bother them because they are paid by the bad boys well they've become successful and it all happened on their own they did it all by themselves and anyone who has not done it is a lazy bum and will not pull himself up by the bootstraps this is a country of opportunity oh sure it is hey I don't a New York City cop doesn't make that much anyway they start you off with I think 25,000 a year that's that's chicken feed for putting your life and safety on the line anyway finish the please. decision threw the door open for a wide and complex debate on how Canada should regulate prostitution which isn't in itself illegal in that country and what's the problem what's the problem if it's not illegal the court found that Canada's prostitution laws violated the guarantee to life liberty and security of the person for instance it said the law prohibiting people from making a living from prostitution is too broad it is intended to target pimps and parasitic exploitative conduct in which they engage. The law, however, punishes everyone who lives on the avails of prostitution without distinguishing between those who exploit prostitutes and those who could increase the safety and security of prostitutes. For example, legitimate drivers, managers, or bodyguards. Other countries around the world, particularly in Europe, are having similar debates. Earlier this month, France's lower house of parliament passed a bill that would decriminalize prostitutes and fine their customers. Some argue that such laws empower prostitutes against their potential exploiters. But others, including some prostitutes, say it only drives their practice further underground and makes it more dangerous. Sex trade workers in Canada stepped up their fight for safer working conditions following the serial killings of prostitutes by Robert Picton in British Columbia. Picton was convicted in 2007 of killing six women whose remains were found on his farm outside Vancouver. Years earlier, authorities had closed down a Vancouver house for sex workers that many had considered a safe haven, just as the disappearance of prostitutes began raising fears that a serial killer was prowling the streets. The Supreme Court ruling upheld an Ontario Court of Appeal decision last year that among other findings struck down the ban on brothels on the grounds that they endangered sex workers by forcing them onto the streets. I am shocked and amazed that sex work and the sex work laws that affect our lives are, uh, uh, on a daily basis will within a year not cause us harm anymore. Justice Minister Peter McKay said the government was concerned by the decision and exploring all possible options to ensure the criminal law continues to address the significant harms that flow from <coughs> prostitution to communities, those engaged in prostitution and vulnerable persons. Chief Justice Beverly McLachlan, writing on behalf of the court, said, Canada's social landscape has changed since 1990 when the Supreme Court upheld a ban on street solicitation. These appeals and the cross appeal are not about whether prostitution should be legal or not, she wrote. They are about whether the laws Parliament has enacted on how prostitution may be carried out pass constitutional muster. I conclude they do not. 
Don Hutchinson, Vice President of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada, a religious group that opposes the decriminalization of prostitution, warned that the ruling could lead to increased human trafficking and victimization of people. I think we're going to see an increase in cross-border traffic for those hoping to access our brothels. The last time Canada's Supreme Court considered the country's prostitution laws was in 1990 when it upheld a ban on street solicitation. Hmm. Yeah, what, what can I say? I mean, uh... Progressive, <laughs> but not fast. Yeah, well, these people um, that are living a lie of, of delusion and uh, misinformation, and it just amazes me how they do not seek the real truth. They don't even try, and there are people, the people, including the people that vote for the right-wingers, do not go out and seek the real truth. Because they're lazy. They want to be spoon-fed. No, and just, they want Pablo. They don't want hard-hitting truth. People do not want to rock the boat. Yeah, there are, I know people like this uh, personally that... Uh, yeah, well those are the ones that aren't even interested in politics. Their life is of fun, pleasure, uh, um, 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 pleasant things, and they it's like an ostrich sticking its head in the sand. They don't want to hear about serious issues. They don't want to hear about pandemics. They don't want to hear about um, crime. They don't want to hear about corruption. They just they just want to enjoy themselves. And they are they are dependent because they're always looking for somebody else to solve the problem, do the job, whatever. Ah, like the people who would rather get their religious information from a TV evangelist. Oh, he's so emotional. Oh, he's... Oh, my God. Oh, that Joel Osteen. What a, what a wonderful smile he has on his face all the time. He's so positive. Yeah. they rather get their information from a man on television or the radio than to open up the Bible and read it themselves. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Yeah, Thessalonians. So they rather do that. So they're lazy. Yeah. They're very lazy. Some of them are uh, downright stupid because, you know, if like... They, they don't like to test their intelligence. Like in other words, look, George Carlin was right. Question everything. And I mean everything. Question everything. Do not believe something because a person is telling you this or your government is telling you this. Yeah. Or especially Fox News or a corporate CEO. Yeah. Don't believe what a CEO tells you. I told somebody on, on the Progressive Discussions group, I says, I'd rather put my trust in big government way before I put my trust in a corporate CEO. Corporations. Yeah, as long as that big government is working for me, not a corporation. Well, not a wealthy person. Well, if it's a if for it's me. a gov if it's a government control, I'm part of it. if it's a government controlled by corporations, it will not be for you, and thus, um, they won't even listen to your cries. I mean, it, it just won't be for you. But Correct. I mean, big it won't be big, is what I'm saying. A corporation that's not for you will not be big government because right wingers and corporations want to shrink big government. Only one part of it. The part that helps the needy. Right. Well, they not want the part that helps the welfare and the, the big boys and girls. Not that part. Well, they don't. They won't touch it. Well, they don't seem to like the Parks Commission either. National parks or. Because, yeah, because they're taking money from doing what? What the hell does the National Park do? It provides a lot. Hey, we had to get our pamphlets into, uh, 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 uh the, what's the big uh, park out there? The, the big Rio Grande River, the big, the, the big Grand Canyon. 
we had to get our pamphlets in there showing that uh, humans existed with dinosaurs and that the uh, earth is 6,000 years old. Well, what, what does... What does That's the only good, the National the, Park. The only corrupt. thing the corporation uh, does, the only thing it's good for, is helping themselves. Bingo! Self-interest! The National Park is, is, is good for the people. It, it does a lot of good for the people. Uh, that's historic, why it must be crushed. Historic monuments do a lot of good for the people. Museums and the arts do good for the people. The only thing, the only thing right wingers and corporations do is make money for themselves, stuff money in their own pocket, and mooch off their self interest. Of, it and, is the crux of the capitalistic crux. system. Crux. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I heard what you said, but uh, these things do nothing they, for them. That's what, I, that's what you were saying. Yeah, they, you know, I mean, uh, I was gonna say something, but you, well, you, you got right in. You gave me a Billy Morrow. You got right in there. Good, because that's what it's supposed to do. <sighs> All right, listen. This is an exchange. This is why I. Not I, a monologue. This is why I I raise the volume of my voice. Otherwise, you people will not hear what I have to say in its entirety. Entirety is important to me. All you right. want to do a monologue like a Jay Leno? Or an exchange? Well, I don't want to, I don't want to, sometimes, True, you may forget sometimes me, say. sometimes me completing my sentence is only another few seconds or several seconds. You know, I mean, that's I mean, my, I I, I'm not monologue, and I'm just I telling you my train of thought all the that time. the government, uh, that the uh, uh, that big government, since big government doesn't exist under the right wingers and, cor and corporate control, there won't be big government. So what I'm saying is, if you have big government, you most likely have a progressive liberal government. If it's big government, because big government helps. The people. It does good for the the the, the masses. It's the, called a democracy. The common man. We're supposed to have it. And I trust that before I trust a country being run by CEOs. Fascism. Period. Period. Fascism. And if and if re, if religion, listen, if if Pat Robertson and people like him want to stick their Pinocchio nose into the government's business and our lives, then make our them. Bedroom. them what? Our bedroom. That too. The bedroom. Make them pay taxes like any other rich person. Well, no, not... let Make them pay taxes like a rich person is supposed to pay. You know, anyway, it's time for Reverend Dr. Bill's lunch, and uh, we will be back with William H. Morrow III, our voiceover uh, specialist, and we'll, we'll be coming... Uh, simulcast, you know, we'll, we'll be coming to you live with William Morrow at his uh, Dogfight Studios uh, main office. Dogfight? That's, that's the, uh, the division that involves his uh, screenplay writing and uh, voiceovers. Dogfight Studios. Okay. While the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is having his lunch, I am now here visiting with the one and only voiceover artist, our very own voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III. And uh, he is in his office in a, what is the organization called? Dogfight Studios? Dogfight Filmworks, Dogfight Soundworks. Soundworks? Both, both. Dogfight. the audio for the, for the music, the CD division. Right. Yeah, there's a film division. So Dogfight Soundworks, Dog, uh, Dogfight Dog Filmworks. Filmworks, I'm sorry. The main office of William H. Moore the third. Um, and how are you, sir, today? Like everyone else, life bites. Life what? Bites. Life bites. But okay. we'll get better, we hope, don't we? Everyone? You mean, is that like saying uh, shit happens and then you die? It sucks. <laughs> yes. Okay, you, you, you wanted to discuss something uh, based well, on articles. Well, just, just bacteria. Uh, it's getting beyond hospitals. MRSA viruses, they're getting strain resistant, it's getting worse. When I was in the hospital years ago uh, with pneumonia, my last night, it was around 11 o'clock, I remember exactly, I was about to fall asleep. Out of nowhere, these people come rushing in in hazmat suits. They say, Mr. Morrow, we better get you out of this room immediately. I said, why? 
They said, your new, your new roommate just tested positive for the MRSA virus. Oh, wow. I said, well, I'm right with you. Let's go. I jumped out of the bed. That's why I was out of here. I said, well, what about me? They said, you tested negative. You're okay. They said, we have to quarantine this room with him in here. And we want you out of here. Right. Uh, it's going beyond hospitals. It could be... I think we discussed this on a show two, two or three weeks ago. Look at the amoebas in these lakes that have killed these children. Brain-eating amoebas. Because oh, because if you're if you're uh, swimming in a lake, you're bound to swallow a tiny bit of water, which could have an amoeba. Well, they really don't say swallow water there. They say if it goes up the nostril and in the eye membrane, mucous membrane. They never mention anything about the mouth swallowing, which is odd. So an amoeba. So what are you supposed to do? An amoeba is small enough to penetrate a mucous membrane. Oh yeah. I didn't know it was that small. Oh god, yeah. They're almost microscopic, basically. They're very, very small. The bottom line is just what we're finding out. Who knows what it's out there? They're incubating that we don't know about. Right. Let's be honest too. Everybody knows about the e, the uh, uh, uh not E. coli. Ebola. Ebola? Ebola. How, how oh, deadly that, it what's the, what's, that liquefies your, your internal organs. That's That's, that's considered that's, very bad. It's in Africa. But everybody needs to realize that's a phase three. The worst is phase five. So what does that say? Do you know what's happening right now? Things are incubating in caves. Yes. In, uh, um, phase four and phase fives are incubating. Bacteria. Known bacterial infections. These very bacteria are coming back stronger than ever and immune to the antibiotics that are Jimmy, being That's described. what the article says right here. Deadly uh, drug resistant bugs spreading beyond hospitals. Hundreds of thousands of cases go unreported. Okay. So there's our problem. What do we do? Where are we headed? What's going to happen? Personally, I think, you're the article. I think it will. It's going to be a whole thing. <coughs> <coughs> you're going to say a whole other pandemic. Black plague or worse. Well, yeah, especially you know? if, um, especially since the the human races, um, especially in the United States, our immune systems are getting weaker and weaker because of the poison, the toxic garbage that they they sell in supermarkets and uh, and, and uh, nutritional deficiencies because well, of the food, the, 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 line the lousy food uh, American food companies sell. Consider it a trial run. Uh, okay. The main thing is the incubation of how it happens so quickly within a matter of hours. What does that tell you? All right? Right. Within hours. This is not good. And what kind is it? Exactly. How are you getting it? Is how it are you? airborne? From touching? From what? Right. Do you remember the the the, uh, 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 the kissing disease? What was that? Mononucleosis. Now it's not from kissing. Now what's it from? Well, mononucleosis is related to the um, to the Epstein Barr uh, uh, chronic well, fatigue yeah, syndrome perhaps, virus. Perhaps. No, perhaps. It's related. It's related. Well, I hope related. they know they're right. But now they're calling this a nation's most daunting public health threat. Just like all, like shingles is herpes. Herp is, when people say the word herpes, they think of genital herpes. Right. But there are different types of herpes. But listen to this. You have cold sores, herpes, herpes zoster would be, I think. Uh, no drug-defying bug has proved more persistent than MRSA. None has caused more frustration, and none has spread more widely. New MRSA strains have emerged to strike in community settings, reaching far beyond hospitals and affect school tr children, soldiers, prison inmates, even NFL players. This is not good. No. We have, it's beyond epidemic. It's just bad. The. Uh, and most people don't realize what it is. Exactly. It's sad. It's not about, as they say right here in the article, it's not about winning or losing the battle against MRSA. It's that the battle is shifting. This is from a Princeton University scholar. Right. And look what they just had with meningitis mm -hmm. down there. You're seeing people who are young and healthy, and it's very serious. And it's not even picked up in the statistics. I mean, we don't really, our, our records are not adequate. We don't know. How many people with MRSA are out there right now don't even really, they have MRSA? Most cases go uncounted. Right. Successes are masking new threats. Infections in kids are climbing. Officials have a patchwork control plan, meaning nobody knows how to attack this. So what do we do? 
Well, um, but I can't ask you because if they don't have the answer, how could you possibly? How could I possibly? Who knows? They should. Nobody has. You the have answer. to do it the way they're approaching cancer now is strengthening, maximizing the immune system to attack the pathogens, just like the, it attacks the tumor and the cancer cells. The biggest cause of even so much as allergies is a weakened immune system and the environment that the human but if humans. But already weakened. What do you do? If somebody comes to the hospital, they're weakened. What do you do? Well, a hospital is not you know? is not going to care about your immune system being so strong. Where do you go? Because if if healthy people equals no customers for the American medical profession. There's been little or no decline in cases from community-based strains. Kids, infections are climbing. New threats. Okay, well, um, here's one doctor. What really bothers me is the rapidity of the deterioration of the patient. How fast this thing attacks your body, the human body. Here's a guy, look at this, in a coma for three weeks. They don't even know for certain how I got this, he says. Yeah. To yeah. this day. And that's MRSA. That's MRSA, right. What other things besides MRSA? Yeah, I mean, I mean... Uh, what do you think is out there incubating? Could be could be anything. I just mentioned to you about e e e uh, Ebola. Maybe, God, God forbid, maybe smallpox is... That's nothing compared to you phase three Ebola. Yeah, I know, I know. But Ebola is a phase three, the bottom line. Phase five is your worst. Smallpox is what affected the uh, Native Americans when the when the set European settlers came yeah, over. Yeah, it's been eradicated per se. The, po the, Polyne the Polynesian people. But the bottom line is you've got a phase three. You have phase four and fives incubating out there. Yeah. What does that mean? Airborne Ebola? Or who knows what? what? The bottom line, everybody better realize, number one, what's coming? Number two, what can you do about it? Probably nothing. Well, science can't find anything to do about it. What's your defense? Depends, what, no depends what science you're, you're just talking about. If you're talking about uh, alternative and holistic medicine. Well, they have no answers to it. Sure they do. See, do you, well, they're not publishing it then anyway. Well, if it's, if it's a dangerous uh, mutated virus or bacterial strain and it hits you hard. Time is of the essence. You don't have time. Regardless what you up. do. You don't have time. Your time is limited. This thing is hitting so fast, people are afraid. That's what shocks the doctors. It's hitting too quick. The last time I heard so about it. I've heard nobody in holistic or vitamins or alternative the, medicines the, doing it. The, the modern the, CDC the, doesn't know what to do. Who, the, who knows what to do on this? The last time I heard about a pandemic was the uh, a, a, the uh, swine flu and the avian, the bird flu. Oh, those are minor compared to what this is. Those were minor. And that's severe. And they are nothing. They're baby, yeah. baby viruses compared to this. So this is a uh, pandemic that would... Uh, be that maybe would, that perhaps would, the worst in mankind's history. It would be the modern day plague, equal to the Black Plague was in the Middle Ages. I mentioned that earlier, the Black Plague, but I think this might be even bigger. You know because what? you have more people now. Well, you know what spread the Black Plague? Not so, not no, so much... Said, not, rats, not the rats, the fleas. No, no, no. The, the fleas. The, on, the, fleas, the fleas on the rats is what spread it. They all did. They all did their part. Usually it's and, the parasite uh, that... Uh, no, it doesn't matter. How do you fix it? <clears throat> you know, I mean... What do you do? People have to start taking a hard look at their lifestyle and their eating uh, no, habits. I disagree. And, and get I, their immune system strong I, to begin I with. I disagree. I think it's all got to do with technology. We're traveling worldwide now. And it's going to spread everything overnight. But you, you never had fire or red ants in Florida. No. They came over on cargo ships way back. That's how they got from to this South, country. From South America. They are not from this country. You're talking about invasive species. Invasive the python. species. Look at the Everglades being overrun by python. Well, you know what that is? From people Hur throwing them back. Hurricane Andrew. Yes, and other places. Set them loose. So there you at go. At a zoo in South Florida. That's right. So how do we eradicate It was Dade County. Is it? You know, invasive. So what do we do? Listen, invasive. If invasive species of animals can get around as stowaways, so can pathogens, viruses, deadly bacteria. So how do we do anything about this? What do we do? Do you have an answer? I don't. Well, since the drugs and and antibiotics are no effect for the new pathogens coming back stronger Nothing's than working. ever. 
what do you do? The only thing you can do is get your, your system ready ahead of time by strengthening that your immune never system. Happen. Quit the bad habits. That will never happen. You eat, will never eat, get the majority of society to do eat that. Eat phytonutrient, no. whole organic foods, Jimmy, take the right supplements. No, it will not happen. It won't happen. They're drug resistant. Look, look at even says it right here. That's a drug. Drug resistant by spreading beyond hospital. Drug resistant. You're not going to get people to go on health kicks. You never have, you never will. The majority will not. Well, there, there, my prediction is there will be a high fatality rate. Well, that, I see that too. You know. That's obvious. Right. That's obvious. That's, there's no question about that. You know, no, nobody's arguing that point. Right. So, the bottom line is things don't look good. No, well, That's hey, the man. sad part. You know? If you talk to a theologian, I'd like to know. We are living in the end times. What I would to like to know is where did this start? Where did it come from? What was the beginning? Come well, on, come on, Jimmy. Let's be honest. Well, they blame the monkeys. They, the they, they, they blame the monkeys in Africa. Not, 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 not How Peter. Did the first case come about Ebola. I mean, yeah. I no, no, not Ebola. Uh, drug is a mercy virus. Mercy virus. How even Ebola? How did the first case? What caused That's this? a good question, Bill. Where did it come from? There has to be the first. Where of course, of course. Who started this? It's, it's very similar to your question about our very existence, the existence right. of the universe. Well, did God create man or did man create God? And and you and your your question was how could God have been here all the time? It's impossible. With not no universe and nothing. No beginning. How can that be? It'll drive you nuts thinking about it. But how can there be no beginning? It was always there. How can that possibly be? It's not for us to understand. Why isn't it? Because it has to do with God. What kind of an argument is that? Well, we can't what prove, if you're wrong? We can't prove it. Well, I can't disprove it either. You know why? This is based on faith. Faith is just hope. It's not fact. You're what right. It's fact. You're absolutely right. You know, what's up there? A board table of all the different gods? Who's right? Who's wrong? I'd like to know, really. You know, for the, for all these things. That's why I tell people that are religious nuts. I give you an example. A woman, a woman in Phoenix, Arizona, was um, was slapped in the face by one of these right wing religious nuts because she she what she was doing she was a Salvation Army um, uh, bell ringer oh, they got on her for that she was no 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 wait she was a Salvation Army uh, bell ringer collecting donations for the Salvation Army and this woman in Phoenix Arizona obviously a right-wing religious nut slapped the, the poor girl in the face because she was saying happy holidays oh, come instead on. of Merry Christmas come on you believe it yeah I do believe it no no it's true it happened I do believe it I think it's stupid. No, it's on. Now, this woman who slapped the Salvation Salvation Army um, uh, bell ringer, she, okay, what she was doing was she was forcing her religious beliefs on others, but she can't prove her religious beliefs. She can't prove her religious beliefs. So what right does she have? Being that Jimmy. Americans are made up of all people, taxpayers are made up of atheists, Jimmy. of Hindus, of, of Buddhists. Jimmy, yeah. we were friends a long time, let's be honest. You just, what you just said. Who can or can anyone prove their religious beliefs? And if, right. you, if that's true, tell me who. Yeah. You know, really. Remember what I said. Faith equals hope. Faith does not equal fact. You're Remember right. that. I would love to know the truth. It's like a wishful thinking, so to speak. Thank you. I'd Thank like you. to know the truth. We, like people I, say, I don't argue with you. No, or I'm, not arguing. I'm not no, arguing. I'm not saying that. I'm just giving an example. I'd like to know the truth. Wouldn't you? Do you know how many people are probably of afraid of the truth? They don't want to hear it. A lot of people They'd are. A lot of people are, are offended by the show Ancient Aliens. It's a wonderful show. A lot of people are. It makes them it's nervous. A few things that backs things up more than religion does, doesn't it? Am I right or wrong? They well, back it up. They, well, don't give you they are dealing. They are dealing with a lot of theories too. What? But they, they have. Show you the but paintings, they have the whole. But they back it up. But they Come have on, Jimmy. Some evidence. 
No, it's a lot of evidence. An awful lot of evidence. Writings, the whole but hieroglyphics, come on, Jimmy. Where have they not backed anything up? Because because the ancient carvings show people that look like they're in spacesuits. They look like they're in spacesuits. Look like it. You couldn't do it any better. Flying vessels. Cool. This is the cell. We are recording for the internet show. And uh, a good friend of us, yeah, a good friend of us, Sal, uh, what's your stage name? You want to go by your stage name or just Sal? That's my stage name. Sal, that's it. Yeah. Sal, thank you for joining us. How are you doing, sir? Good, very good. Okay, and we will continue this shortly. I have a question, William H. Moore III. What if, even though the ancient alien uh, scientists, the quantum physicists, and yourself, claim to have all these facts. What if, when you die, you find out that the religious people were right, and then you have to answer to uh, your maker? Isn't it better to just accept both? No, I think it's a little bit of hoping that there is both. There is a maker out there, but we just don't know. And it seems evidence is pointing towards that God and or Jesus may have been an alien. There's more proof towards that than anything. Well, look at look at the creation of the the pyramids. Each block weighs many tons. Which pyramid? All of them, ah, even the ones in America. They're all over the world. The, the Mayans, they? the Aztecs, the uh -huh, Egyptians, I mean, the Coljacks, all of them. There's no way. Uh, How did that happen? There's no way man could have lifted. Did you see where they tried to copy the perfection in between each block or board? Can't do it. Modern technology can't do it. It's precision. So how did they do that precision? You know, they couldn't fit a razor blade in between That's the two right. blocks. That's right. How do they do that? Each block weighed many tons. So how do they do that back then? Supposedly. And then it would do all of that about Atlantis, we do about other things, the whole bit. I mean, it goes on yeah. and on. Because we know so little about what's really going on. No do you realize we only know approximately about 10% of the species on this planet? That's all we know. You know, we know more about space than we know about our own ocean depths. That's true. What does that tell you? That's true. So really, what do we really know? Did you know that this Peruvian woman on the Travel Channel says that the scientists, that you people are underestimating the ancient Peruvian Incas? No, she's wrong. There is no physical way that sheer manpower could lift, could elevate a block that weighs many tons Listen, up that high. I mentioned on your show months ago <clears throat> the uh, um, uh, the coral compound in Florida. You, do you know about that cell? One gentleman back in the 30s, I think it was, his wife or girlfriend left or died. He was so devastated. He built an entire compound of giant nine ton plus coral blocks by hand. Today's equipment can't lift that. The last published photo of him showed him holding one on the tip of his finger. His last written words were, I have mastered anti-gravity. Wow. There was a three log triangle or pyramid with a black box at the very top. Modern science is trying to figure out to this day we don't know what was in that box. Could that could have that box? Could that have been a, an alien power source? But his last written words were, I have mastered anti-gravity. And he'd say with a finger, a nine-ton block of coral on his finger. I welcome any argument. To this day, nobody can argue the point. How did he build that all by himself? And that's probably how they, they built it back then. Now, the the, uh, the great prophet, the sleeping... Back then, even today, you couldn't do that. How long would, no. how hard would it be to build that today? The sleeping... Nobody... I mean, we don't know what they have at Area 51, but remember the sleeping prophet, Edgar Casey? Edgar Casey. He believed that there was an ancient continent of Atlantis that was very advanced. Well, he's one of them. There are yeah. many that have... That Maybe that's how Atlantis, they teach it. Atlantis, isn't it? Didn't go underground. Under underwater. So, underwater. It, it, but nobody knows exactly where. Well, what happened... Thing. You have four to maybe five, six, or seven different people that have different wherever beliefs. It was, it went right well, well nobody knows wherever it really was. You have some people believe it was Bermuda. You have others believe it was different areas, Indian Ocean, this and that. Nobody can prove where exactly it was. Right, and there's a similar legend in the Pacific called the Mew Continent. Yeah. Yeah. Now the thing is, what, they, what Edgar Casey says is the destruction of Atlantis was similar to Rome. Were there people living in Atlantis? Oh God. yeah, very advanced people. High tech society, electronics, everything. So, let's say wherever they're living, 
and it went underwater. That's the place where it went underwater. Just like that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Agreed. Wherever it was, it went underwater there, yes. They, they found the road. They don't know where it was and what they found. But they no, found they the road near Bimini. They found like a oh, they found road. roads all over the place. They don't know who, the, whether it was Atlantis or another society or whatever. What happened in the southwest a couple of years ago? <laughs> the, the, oh, the deserts. The sand blew out. They uncovered huge buildings of an ancient society with aqueducts like ancient Greece, water aqueducts for miles and miles, a whole bit. No written word. To this day, they don't know who it was. It was there. Who was it? No leftover written record. So, who was this? Yeah, that's true. That's who knows true. what else is out there? We don't know. Like, let, let me be honest with both of you, okay? As of as of as recently as the late sixties, early seventies, the coelacanth was a, a prehistoric fish extinct for what? I think it was six million plus years, and they suddenly found a whole live school of them in the Indian Ocean. Okay, so what do we really know? That's okay, very true. Let's be honest. You know, they're about they're, this, they're, all right? they're they're still discovering new species of, of animals. I just got through telling you guys we only know ten percent species on the planet. Reptiles, insects. Ten percent. You know, what does that leave you? Basic math: ninety percent of things on this planet we don't know much about. Yeah. We know very very little about this planet. But is it more more to do with that has to more to do with the sea life, ocean life yeah. than land life? We know a lot no, we know a lot about no, land. No we don't. How much uncharted land? land? No, we don't know. Do you know how much is in the Amazon uncharted land and the territories or whatever? There's just an awful lot in uncharted land to above Lost ocean. Maybe. Oh God, rainforest, and we're destroying it. A thousand plus acres a there's day, which still, is BS. There's still this is wrong. They're still discovering medicinal plants from the rainforest. They always will. New and new, new Aspirin plants. Aspirin comes from plant. The yeah, white, white for, willow. For uterine, uterine, white. Can, uterine cancer in women comes from the yew tree. I don't know how many, because I'm not a nutritionist. Larch. How many other you ever hear of the substance called larch? It's from a, a, a tree, from uh, like a pine tree. No, I remember him on the Adams family. No, yeah, that was lurch. Yeah. I know. But I, I want to apologize for you listeners for the... Yeah, for the a feeble attempt at humor. No, no, not the humor. Actually, I thought that was a cute joke. But the, the yeah. noise coming from you the background... Rang. Yeah, you rang. The noise coming from the back room, the obnoxious noise. I just want to say that things are very busy at Dogfight Studios at William H. Morrow III's main office. I want to apologize for that annoying yeah, person. Yeah, we do have studios, you know, so things are yeah. going on. This is a woman in the background singing... What nauseates me? These damn Chris, no, no, these Christmas no, songs that we do know uh, very little about what's on this planet. Are designed to do. make people spend their money that they don't we really have. do. And we're finding out more and more there was life on Mars now too, That's because true. Of, of the crystallization, or whatever. Or there had it to be water. Where there's water, there is life. Bacteria. No, no, no. They sent that uh, you know the I don't know a satellite thing over there to like find out what's going on in Mars. You know, it's a rover. Yeah, the rover. Yeah. So that's how that's why they're finding out more and more. Well, mathematically, it's impossible for there not to be life elsewhere. It's impossible. Uh -huh. Mathematically, it's impossible. What? There are billions upon billions, if not trillions, of stars, solar systems, galaxies out there. Where well, there may have been more. Mathematically, it's impossible. And they're still finding the millions more. Uh -huh. They're still finding millions number, more. And number two, if we are the only one, are we that great? No. What's so special about us? No, Come we're, on, people. We're, we're not Come on. We're not advanced. Mathematically, it's impossible. The odds are are in the favor. There's a lot out there. There's more out there than I think we even realize. Right. But then the people, the, the people, the religious people would say, no, there's nothing out there. Sometimes I get tired. Who cares about what the religious people say? Because they're afraid to hear some of the truth. Uh, many times. That's true. They have selective beliefs. Yes. Oh, I don't believe that. The Bible doesn't say that. Right. I don't care what the Bible says, okay? I want to know the truth and the fact. I really admire yeah, that's this. Really what I, want to know. I really admire this new Pope Francis. He's saying yes. a lot of things yes. that are anti, yes. that were against the uh, oppressive you know teachings of the Catholic Church. Religious people only say about their particular religion. Well, yeah, yeah. They, they gotta be yeah, what about the other ones? Or? Well, what do you think you're Taliban and all that? If you don't believe like they do, they'll kill you. Right. And then, you don't believe like I do, the Quran will kill you then. Right. It's either my way or no way. That's where they look at it. Two wishes wrong. And look they look can't prove it. They can't the prove their way. Pope, Pope looked over and kissed that poor guy with a hole of the malfunction things all over his, his skin disease. That was wonderful what he did. Wonderful what he did. It was like kissing a leper, in, in essence, really. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's very... He, 
very uh, compassionate. He's, he's he's the people's pope. He's the people's pope. The, this know, pope is really. no this pope is no poop. He's the people's he's, pope. No, he's he's he's, he's all compassionate, like, humanitarian. He's got he's anything, empathy. He's anything but all business. He's all. What's the best word to say? I. Uh, He's not all business. He's, he's the anti he's, of all business. He's all. He's anti greed. He's, he's all an, people. He's a people's he's pope. People. He's the people's pope. And and will I think it really. Rare. I think he's so good. He's reaching beyond the Catholic Catholicism. Other others like him. Yes. Too, because of what he's doing. Even Protestants yes, love him because of what he is. How can you not admire somebody like this? He talks about the rich you know? helping and giving to the poor, uh -huh. which is something the Catholic Church never did before. They never made statements like that. And, and the Republicans are totally against him because they're about greed and business and corporations. They don't believe in helping the poor. You know what the, some of them said in Washington? I think it was a Paul, uh, Paul Ryan, Rand Paul. They said they want to cut... Um, uh, the federal extension to unemployment and when you run out of unemployment if you can't find a job oh well tough toenails well, that's just not you the, starve to death that's no nah, that's just wrong. that's basically their attitude that almost makes me embarrassed to be a republican then yeah okay all right we're gonna okay we're gonna end right now thank to you be, to be continue very shortly in thank the future. you thank you william h moore the you're third you're for welcome. joining us from Sal country great to have you as a guest yes. my friend Sal who Sal. Uh, let me get in there he always what's, what's your state fingers. what's your actor's name Sal country 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 oh country oh, H -A T-R-I. All right, Sal Cotri, thank you very much. We're William H. Moore the third from Dogfight. Until next time, America. Dogfight Studios. We right? will be back. Dogfight Studios, Dogfight Productions. To be continued. Okay, we are back, and uh, thank you, William H. Moore the third for that very <laughs> invigorating, to say the least, meeting with him. At Dogfight Studios now. Um, now, Doctor Bill, before we get to the readings, I mean, I'm sure you have you heard me debate with uh, William Morrow about uh, uh, what to do about pandemics and uh, the story about uh, bacteria and viruses coming back stronger and drug resistant, and in this case was the MRSA virus. And uh, William seems to side with the uh, the establishment, uh, big pharma and medical doctors, that there's not a, a lot you can do uh, for a uh, to prevent a pandemic. A pandemic. Now, and of course, I told him about strengthening the immune system, changing one's lifestyle, eating habits, taking supplements in proper optimal dosages and just preparing yourself for these pathogens even allergies it's immune related building the immune system and most Americans probably have a very weakened immune system you know so true but people do listen to the official them official them official them it's like it it's like uh, the word comes down from God if the officials have said it. Like the American Medical Association. Correct. Or the New England Journal of Medicine. Pharmaceutical. Or far, big far, pharma. Big pharma propaganda being repeated by a uh, an American news media person. Because it's on primetime TV or it's in, um, what is that newspaper Bill Morrow likes? Uh, New York Times? U.S. World and Report. US, USA? World Report. U.S. That's a magazine. U.S. News and World Report. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's some some other newspaper <coughs> reads. But the point is that they they listen to uh, officialdom, or like I said, the establishment, who has sponsors, and in this case, it's probably Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but you got to strengthen your immune system, and you don't you remember. The RDAs are out. They're dinosaurs. They've been that way for decades. Uh, the, they increased the RDA for uh, vitamin D, didn't they? 
I mean, yeah. vit vitamin D is uh, 400 units. But oh, they in the old days, they used to be scared of vitamin D, vitamin A, uh, vitamin E, and vitamin K, the fat-soluble vitamins. They were, they were fearful of them. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, hey, 5,000 of vitamin D3 is fine. Yeah, that's what they gave. The doctor prescribed this for my sister because she had a vitamin D deficiency. A medical doctor did this. 5,000 IUs. Uh, people with autoimmune diseases. Uh, vitamin D in the right amounts works wonders for them. You know, at least uh, the most common amount in supplements is 1,000 a, a units. 400. <laughs> Four well, multi multivitamins is yeah. four hundred. But I'm saying they sell vitamin D three by itself. Yeah, now in one thousand unit capsules. Now soft gels. Yeah. So anyway, that's what you got to do. You know, the detox is important. A whole lifestyle change, uh, eating habits. It's not just one thing. And uh, Bill just uh, is siding with the corporation because they know better. The powers that be. They know better, you know. Anyway, let us get back to um, these uh, readings. Um, uh, promo will be conveniently at the end of this show. We have a new format for doing promo. So, a great horned owl. Yeah, that's a big. That's a big owl. That flapped into a house near Seattle will soon fly across the country on a commercial airliner to take up residence in Englewood. Why? The owl will become a centerpiece of the new aviary at the Flat Rock Brook Nature Center. That poor owl. He's going from the state of Washington to New Jersey. To the state of chaos. Yeah, and, and, and to breathe in all that lovely <laughs> Lovely polluted uh, New York metropolitan area air off the Hudson River. Which is already a home to a red-tailed hawk and a kestrel. I have red-tailed hawks and I have them across the street in nests. <laughs> Great horned owls are so iconic, they are synonymous with the term owl. Yes. If you've ever watched a scary movie and heard an owl hoot, whoo, whoo, whoo. Oh, it's, it's deeper than that. That's a great horned owl. Yeah, because they got the horns. You know, there are many other owls, uh, screech owls, uh, barn owls, which I think are adorable. They have a heart-shaped face. Very cute. Uh, there are many owls, but great horn is the biggest one, and they have the horns. The aviary... They're feather horns, they're not real horns, but... Yeah. Either wanted a great horned owl or a barn owl for the aviary since the nearby Tenafly Nature Center already has two barred owls named Mitzi and Mimi. Yeah, well, I, yeah. They found the great horned owl through the International Wildlife Rehabilitation Council's website where they placed the free ad and said that they were looking for an owl. The I guess she's the uh, director of the aviary Benedetta or Benetta was soon contacted by Jean White a veterinarian who is president of the South Sound Critter Care in Kent, Washington, between Seattle and Tacoma. What did you say? Seattle. What the hell is that? Seattle. Well, say Seattle. Seattle. I, 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 mean, I say it like maybe an Indian would have said it. Seattle. You mean like the way people from Kentucky say Louisville? It can't even, Louisville. doesn't even sound like Louisville. Louisville. It's like Louisville. Lobble. Lobble. Uh, <clears throat> White was seeking a home for a healthy juvenile great horned owl that had been captured at a nearby home, but which had grown so attached to humans 
it would not likely survive if released again into the wild. I think this young of the year owl had fallen into the hands of people who thought they were doing a good thing by caring for it. But an owl like that, by next year it would be landing on someone's shoulder. And that would just get the owl shot. Yeah, if the owl lost its fear of humans and, and became too used to human presence, that would get the owl in, uh, in trouble because of these bastard people out there that like the uh, pieces of shit that shot arctic snowy owls at the JFK airport in New York's New York's JFK airport they migrated and decided to uh, hang out at the airport maybe they wanted to take a flight without actually flying no well, it's a hell of a way to take it into the engine well Believe me. One, one died, right? One I died. don't know. I'm not up on that story. I just know... Yeah, but the, they're beautiful animals. You ever see snowy owls? The over... Yeah. They're, they're white. Gorgeous. Yeah. Snow white. Yeah. The owl is about 3.3 .3 pounds and still a juvenile. Yeah, I was going to say. That doesn't sound like a full-grown uh, horned owl. Based on its size, white and Benedetta think it's a female. Females are a third larger than the males. Many species are the females larger, sure. Not as colorful, but larger. Great horned owls are truly the winged tigers of the night. I think that's one of the very few nocturnal birds. They can catch mammals bigger than themselves. Cats and skunks are on their menu. It's amazing how they dispatch their prey, and it's not with their beak. They can catch big jackrabbits. Wonder if they can catch a jackalop. Well, <laughs> the fact that they can kill a uh, prey larger than themselves is uh, is an amazing feat. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology website describes the great horned owl as one of the most common species of owls in North America, frequenting deserts, wetlands, forests, grasslands, backyards, and cities from the Arctic to the tropics. Their breath is horrible. How... <laughs> How, you mean to tell me the uh, great horned owls will uh, allow you to get that close to them? Imagine eating a skunk. Well, imagine eating any dead roadkill. Or, you know, uh, uh, I'm sure these, these, these animals, uh, uh, when they fly back to the nest, I'm sure they, they kind of decompose up there. But they have very little sense of smell, so it doesn't matter to them. Oh, they hunt by sight. Birds of prey, that is. The only problem was how to get the owl to New Jersey. Poor owl, like I said. Yeah. Flat Rock Brook would have to have it shipped by aeroplane. But it didn't have the money budgeted. You mean there's no like sanctuary, there's no place to bring this owl in the state of Washington, which is a pure, pristine, clean, if I'm not mistaken, beautiful state. If I'm not mistaken, there is now a service which delivers animals by plane. You don't have to put them in the cargo hold, oh. you know, of the big airliners anymore. Or something. I, I think I'm right about that, but I'm not really sure. I, I, I know, th I know they, they, they they created nests on top of New York skyscrapers for peregrine falcons, which is the fastest known creature on Earth, you know, flight-wise. The center set a fundraising goal of $1,000, and Stephen Weissner, the Nature Center's executive director, decided to use social media to generate don donations. I was expecting a lot of small donations, he said. And that's what happened. 
the center hit its goal within four days, collecting about two dozen donations ranging from $10 to $100. Weissner said the center does not plan to name the owl publicly. Typically, we don't, because we want to reinforce the idea that these are still wild animals. Once you give them a name, people tend to get a sense that they are domesticated. They bond with them a little too much. To build the aviary, the Nature Center received a $30,000 grant from the Teaneck-based Henry and Marilyn Taub Foundation. Henry Taub, who died in 2011, started the global payroll company Automatic Data Processing and co-owned the New Jersey Nets for nearly two decades. It's a beautiful aviary. It's got plenty of space, skylights, reclaimed wood from a nearby factory building. Flat Rock Brook officials don't know when the owl will make its transcontinental journey, likely in an animal shipping crate in the belly of a commercial jet. You know how many animals are lost that way? Quite a few. Yeah, not a very pleasant way to travel. Yeah. I think they ship pure breed dogs. Yeah, it's from puppy mills and all from, that. No, 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 no. When you, no, 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 no. When you get a, when you acquire a pure breed dog from a reputable breeder cross country, they ship it to your nearest airport. I, yeah, well, how the hell do you think they ship? It's in a crate, and you have to go to the airport and pick it up. Yeah, so it comes by commercial. Yeah, tour. don't don't confuse them with puppy mills. We're talking about, you know, they uh, dogs, uh, puppies, where they know the 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 ancestry and the lineage. Uh, you know, it might be a champion bloodline, or just it might be from a reputable breeder. No puppy mills. Well, how the hell do you think puppy mills send them across the, uh, the, the the continent? Well, from what I hear, the puppy mills in New Jersey get it from puppy mills uh, locally. Like, for instance... Well, uh, that's, I'm talking it, about from somebody wants to send them from a uh, puppy mill in Oregon over to New Jersey. How the hell do you think it, it comes? By jet? Well, I don't think pup... Yeah, right, correct, correct, right. correct. But puppy yeah. mills don't care for their dogs like uh, reputable breeders do. The center is still waiting for final permits from federal and state agencies. Because this owl is young, they hope it can be easily trained so it can be used in educational programs. Would you like to see a picture of the great uh, horned I've owl? I've seen them many times. Let me see. Okay, now you're going to see it one more time. This is the great horned owl in question. There he is. Yeah, the female. Think? That's it. Oh, they said he was female? Yeah, that's a great horned owl. They are very majestic when it comes to owls, as owls go. I don't know if you folks can yeah. Okay. see it. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's really the most impressive largest of the owls. You know, great horned owl. Thank you. Alright, good enough. Yeah. Now, I'm sure everyone has heard something about the the Duck Dynasty and its <laughs> problems right now. Yeah, the uh, but you know what? Just looking at them, you, you can't expect anything more or less from, from a redneck family that, than, than to make uh, right-wing fundamentalists, uh, right-wing, you know, statements like that. I mean, why are they so shocked? It wasn't the family, it was just the, the patriarch. Yeah, Daddy well, did. you know. Happy, he's, happy, happy. He's got a long beard, he's from the Deep South. But you he know? thinks he's speaking for God. Well, they all. In his statements concerning the Bible. All these right wing evangelical fundamentalists think they're speaking for God. And there is a problem. Just like many Catholics. Now, you tell me. That someone back in the 60s, before civil rights in this country, yeah, yeah. was not aware that blacks had separate drinking fountains, uh, lunch counters, 
bathrooms, doors they that they it. could enter. They knew it. Well, he didn't seem to know that. He said that the people that he, uh, uh, the blacks that he knew and worked around, were always happy singing. Now, this is a person who's, you know, either been out of touch or really didn't want to know the truth, right? Well, um, you know, like, like I had read at the beginning of the show, uh, right-wingers are fine when, when you cut food stamps for, for poor kids, poor children, but they're, they just, they're freaking out because this man was suspended. Uh, personally, I... I mean, I am, um, even though many progressives are politically correct and they believe in censoring certain things, I am very anti-censorship. I, I believe uh, even a hater has the right to his opinion, or her opinion. Yeah, but... Uh, it, it's not, doesn't, that doesn't mean it's the law, but, you know, they have a right to it. But a right-wing hater or whatever has the right to be corrected. Yes, if Thank you if you if you make an ass out of yourself, be prepared for the uh, ramifications of it. Yeah, for someone to stick something up there. Yeah, if you make you like my sister says, if you decide that you want your opinions and what you have to say, if you decide you want it out there for the world to see, be prepared for the uh, feedback. That's correct. That you might not want. That's correct. Or like. So then the question becomes for his other, his other uh, uh, incorrect statement. Since when does, if you are gay, uh, uh, when do you become a bestialist? That's like, that's like saying that if you, if you only smoke a joint of marijuana every now and then, you're going to end up becoming a full-blown crack addict crack or heroin addict or something you're going to want more and more and more well, and more yeah, that's basically what he was saying because uh if you're gay uh, pretty soon it morphs into bestiality and 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 and, 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 and all kinds of other uh sexual uh, uh misdemeanors or whatever then then there will be a, a I mean, what the hell then then there will be a massive uh, evolution of uh, gay people in the united states uh, turning to bestiology which is not happening yeah, well, they also, yeah. right-wingers also, of course, they, they uh, gay people are pedophiles also. Not necessarily, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, what are they going to say next? They're going to turn into necrophiliacs? Yeah, Having I think... sex that, with corpses? I guess, I guess, yeah, that's one of the other ones, too, maybe. Uh, well, I have never Necrophilia. heard... I have never heard of a foot fetishist turning into a quote-unquote normal heterosexual you call them vanilla right yeah vanilla vanilla that's that's the term fetish people use for yeah. regular meat and potatoes I mean if you have your fetish you have your fetish the fetish yeah the fetish is the fetish yeah whatever it may be so you're not going to change over or morph into uh, something else you know because you are something because else because they are taking uh, God's laws into their own hands. They they are becoming uh, judge and jury and executioner. Uh, yes. But and uh, they're pushing their views on other people. But they are Bible thumpers, and Bible thumpers at least owe you uh, uh, to know of the truth of which they speak. Right. And the truth is, I don't care who you call this name, that name, right. this. Uh, and, and that they're not going to inherit the, the kingdom of God and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but pal, you forgot one important thing. They are not under judgment now. And they're not under judgment by him. Exactly. Or Pat Robertson. Exactly. Or any of them. They are not under judgment from God at this time. Only the elect. They will have their time. Yeah. Okay? And that's what these people don't understand. But they're Bible thumpers. They should know it all, should they not? Otherwise, keep their freaking mouths shut. Nobody asks. And, and if they really want to know something, they can they can ask me, of course. Nobody asks them for their opinion. Therefore, they should not volunteer it. Exactly. 
You know, it's... Because um, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. That's true. That is true. But, uh... Um, so let's, uh, let's read a little bit of that. Yeah, let's, let's Phil Robertson and yeah, what he did say. Yeah. Duck Dynasty patriarch Phil Robertson suspended from the series indefinitely after making disparaging remarks about gays is getting some pump support from key followers. Sarah Palin. Oh, there, another expert on the Bible. Oh, there is somebody you really look up to for her opinion. Oh, yeah. Like a uh, uh, Barbara Bubbleheaded Bachman and uh, Ann Coulter and uh, uh, Sarah Palin and uh, all of them. I call them the conservative coven of you witches. You forgot Christine. Christ I haven't heard about her. In no, a while. you didn't because she was a put up candidate to appeal to the right wing nuts. Christine, uh, 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 the witch, the, uh, the former Wiccan. Which O'Donnell, who supposedly had sex with her boyfriend in college on the altar, on the Wiccan altar. When I hear these uh, these idiots, these bubble-headed boobies, all I hear is this. That's all I hear. It's a slide whistle. I haven't played it in a long time. Blown it. That's all I hear when Sarah Palin talks. But there's a lot of fans out there of Sarah Palin. <coughs> Sarah Palin posted a picture on her Facebook page of her with the reality show clan with the message, free speech is an endangered species. Well, honestly, everybody's entitled to... Uh, their opinions. It just just don't force it on others. I'm I'm and I'm try to be accurate. I believe in free speech. Try to be accurate. Even if they, we don't yell fire in a crowded yeah, theater. No, even if they even if they make a complete ass of themselves, they're still entitled to their opinion. But they are not entitled to a large megaphone. Why not? Are they? Why not? Why are they? Then everybody should get the uh, the megaphone. Correct. So why only they? You're right about that. And their opinion. How come always the right wing get the FaceTime? You're right about that. And Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal also lamented the suspension on free speech terms. It's a messed up situation when Miley Cyrus gets a laugh and Phil Robertson gets suspended said the governor in a statement on Thursday. A&E announced Wednesday what it called a hiatus for Robertson, 67, after he disparaged gays in the January edition of GQ magazine. You know, George the guy had a real cute uh, poem that he wrote concerning this man from Duck Dynasty. It, it, it yeah, was, I saw or, that. Yeah, it was very well made. Do you know, you know George well. Takai does like a hundred push-ups a day, something to that effect. He did it on, on a talk show. Uh, he's, he's quite the athlete for his, he's in his late 70s. He doesn't look it. No, because he's always, he always has the uh, long sleeve shirt. So maybe George Takai can fight the, the captain of the Gorn ship, not just Shatner. You know who I think could fight it? Levity Bells, Mr. what? Mr. G on Channel 11 Weather. He's got what? He's got broad shoulders. He lifts. He does? Yes, of course but he it, does. But he's such a mild-mannered meek when he talks. Mm -hmm. He's very low-spoken. I wouldn't think he lifts weights because he just he doesn't have a macho voice. Jindal also said that growing up in Louisiana before the Civil Rights Movement, oh, excuse me, this is Phil who said, growing up in Louisiana before the Civil Rights Movement, he never saw mistreatment of blacks. Because he lives... So did he never see one of them fountains? Did he never see one of the back doors? Did he never want to see the lunch counter where they couldn't sit down and have a meal? What the hell did this man say? Ah, he I have an explanation. But he lived in the boonies. He wears sunglasses. Top. Well, that's what the music is from. 
because they look like ZZ Top. But he, don't they live in the silk shirts, black ties, sharp dress man? Nothing. <laughs> She's got legs, she knows how to use them. Da -na -na -na. She's got ZZ the legs. Top. I love ZZ Top. But don't they live in the boonies? But they must know about the racism. I don't know. The, the racism. They live in the boonies. I'm sure they know about the racism in the But South. one of the kids, Jace, lives in a subdivision. They know what's the going on. The father owns a lot of land. Phil owns a lot of land. Oh, God. They know... They, they know of these things. They it's, live in Monroe. Did anybody... And that looks pretty up to date. Did anybody uh, interview this gentleman to get him to Not say yet. these things? Or yeah, he, GQ Magazine. Well then, uh, if you ask the man <sighs> questions and you want to interview the man, he's going to tell you what, whatever's on his mind. What do they expect? But is he going to tell you his prejudice? Or his accurate oh, yeah, yeah. You know, listen, viewing of listen, the situation. Listen, uh, progressive liberals out there, even a hater has a right to freedom of speech, just like you do, or progressive liberals, you know. And thus, the uh, other people have a right to correct it. Right. Once you right. censor a specific group, uh, let's say it's uh, the American... Nazi, uh -huh. neo-Nazi party. Once you censor them, where does it end? Yeah, they tend to get stronger. No, they, they censor, censor other people. Oh, well, they censor all, all from the beginning. You can't allow the censorship. Even Paula Dean has a right to her opinion back then. Yeah, there's another one who didn't see uh, any of the bad stuff going on around her. Must have lived a sheltered life, these two. You know? Well, who cares? You know, it's their, it's how they feel. You know, maybe somebody had a bad experience with a certain race, and they're they they got burnt, and then no, they're, he said they they're full of hatred. He said they were happy. They well, didn't have any problems. They were singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Well, they're not. They're not. They're not slaves anymore, but that doesn't mean they don't have problems. They still, they're, they're still well. Obviously, I'm saying that's what I'm racism. saying. He didn't see the problems, and and the economy and the job market is still horrible, and and the poor. A lot of southern states are are extremely poor, like Mississippi. And, they're uh, poor by design. Mississippi and um, uh, they don't want to give anything to the needy. West Virginia. Well, in those did states. you did you? Look at all the states in the United in, in the United States, all the states in this country that have Republican governors who refused Obamacare free money as an extension to the Medicaid for the poor. Because it would be doing something for the poor. They refused it, and it's free money coming from the federal government. And free they refused money for it for two years, and then the state would only have to pick up ten percent after that. Well, to spite Obama, they refused it. Correct. Out of spite. But despite their own people. Their own people, yeah. Correct. Because those on Medicaid now will not have that coverage. And what do these Southern and Western Bible Belt people do, even if they're poor? Guns! No, they vote oh. against their own best interest. And they, uh, they vote for people based on their uh, religious cult ideology and they don't think of their own best interests. And the Republican does not have a poor person in, the, in their best interests. They just don't. In a statement, A&E said, it was extremely disappointed to see Robertson's anti-gay remarks, which it said were based on his personal beliefs and do not reflect those of A&E or the show. A&E Networks, a joint venture of the Walt Disney Company and Hearst Corporation, called itself a supporter of the gay community. Does he have any connection with Walmart in terms of advertising for the Christmas season? Now, why why did this person who's on the uh, on our Facebook group kept on saying, "Well, he's representing Walmart that sells products to all Americans, and you can't piss off one group, one group who buys." Uh, uh, in relation to this, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, I don't know. He's he's involved with with marketing something. He's involved in marketing with uh, that big uh, 
that big uh, outdoor company, not Caballos or about whatever that Cabela's, is. Yeah. The other one. I know he's got a chia pet. Yeah. <laughs> you put no, the, they got all kinds of marketing. You put things. the seeds on the face yeah. and the beard. The beard, the chia becomes the. That's why this beard. thing yeah. will be resolved according to money. Now, first of all, they don't have to worry for a little while because the first nine episodes for next year are in the can already. So he will be in them. Okay? Yeah, I wouldn't waste them. So they wouldn't, uh, they don't have to worry about a thing yet. Hey, he's a character. They're all characters. It's a funny show. Uh, it's just like an actor. It's just like if, if George Clooney or uh, a Hugh Jackman or, or um, Nicolas Cage said something in their personal life that people don't like. Hey, there's still talented actors and actresses and what people say and do in their private time when they're off the clock is their business. <laughs> yes, but uh, you, do not, you do not do it as Phil did it. He preached it from the pulpit. Because he's they asked okay. him. They asked him for. You know, they they try to pick his brains on this interview. No, that, I'm talking about. He preached it. Oh, from the oh, pulpit, like right wing and evangelicals these, normally and do. And bestialists yeah. and these and that. He gave a sermon. Will not enter the kingdom of God. He gave a sermon to the general public, and the general public is made up of all types of people, even atheists, and they all pay taxes. And he was making judgmental uh, statements. Correct. I got you. The channel's move was lauded by the gay and lesbian media advocacy group GLAD. What's clear is that such hateful, anti-gay comments are unacceptable <coughs> to fans, viewers, and networks alike. GLAD spokesman Wilson Cruz said, Robertson's removal has sent a strong message that discrimination is neither a Christian nor an American value. Robertson and his extended family became wealthy manufacturing duck calls and were turned into TV and pop culture stars by Duck Dynasty, which has set cable re ratings records for a non-fiction series. In his GQ interview, Robertson was asked his definition of sinful behavior. Start with homosexual behavior and just morph out from there, such as bestiality, he said. GQ said he then paraphrases a biblical reference. Don't be deceived. Neither the adulterers, the idolaters, the male prostitutes, the homosexual offenders, the greedy, the drunkards, the slanders, the swindlers, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. Don't deceive yourself. Unless they, right. unless they repent. That's correct. Unless they repent. They so can. this man is, uh, is a, a Snow White sinless? This Duck Dynasty character that he could be judging well they pray after every so, so episode at a big meal with the family there well most evangelicals and he says in Jesus' name amen yeah they do that they like to say grace uh, they like to pray for uh, everything every little thing because they think that uh, God's walking alongside of them and they can have a conversation with God and ask him for any well, little thing and they like, like to be seen of others like the Pharisees and Sadduckees of old. They did not wish to pray in their closet like God said. No, they're sanctimonious. They're show-offs. They're sanctimonious self people. They're self-righteous. They want to show off uh, their religiosity. Their godliness. Right, because they want to, because they think they're better than other people. Just yes. like um, when a celebrity is on a talk show and all they do is talk about and promote themselves. Oh, my next movie. Oh, I got, a, I got a couple clips from my new movie. Oh, I'm writing a book. Oh, and, and they don't talk about any, anything else but that. 
I really admire celebrities that talk about important things when they're on the <laughs> air. There are there are those that do that. But um, anyway, uh, <sighs> regarding the Pope should not condemn capitalism. Pope Francis, let me salute him for the for the holiday season. He's my kind of Pope. This Pope is definitely no poop. He's my kind of Pope. A letter writer opposes what he calls Pope Francis's dream worlds and advocates for a patronizing brand of common sense. He then instructs Pope Francis not to destabilize capitalism. Why not? It, it, the Bible is definitely against it. The Bible is not too crazy about capitalism. Our common sense, however, says that the 2007 recession presented to the world a destabilized capitalism that is still in search of job stability for millions of workers. The writer's solution to creating a more just and prosperous society seems to come from the school of social Darwinism and its survival of the fit theory. This theory would leave a struggling 99% underclass grateful for the trickle downs they get from the 1% who want to rule us. The Pope's appeal to so many comes about because he has made it a point of not living in anyone's dream world but of reaching out to people where they really live and by being there for them whatever their belief or their tradition. Recall that the biblical Jesus once yelled at and personally overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple. Yes he did. And then fashioned a whip to drive the vendors away. So the Pope comes off as mild in comparison when he objects to the halls of business and commerce being used by some capitalists to create huge income imbalances, imbalances that we believe greater uni unionization of the workforce can correct. He's only following what's in the Bible. Pope Francis, he, for the first time ever, you know, I, I, I really admire him. Let me let the cat out of the bag. He won't come back, I don't Go ahead, Ted, yeah, Teddy. Come on, Ted. Yeah, the big uh, mouser's out. Yeah, we had to let Teddy, the cat, out. Theodore. You know, uh, there's, there are cats here that go back and forth. Now. Oh, yes, sir. It, well, this is interesting. Uh, Pope Francis here. Yeah. Because there is an edict or whatever from the Catholic Church. Is that like edict? Written many, many moons ago. Is that like edict bunker? Stating James categorically yeah. that the Pope, uh, the Catholic Church, was above the Bible. Yeah, they're like Republicans. They're, right. they're above the law, they're above the Constitution, they're above everything. Except when it works for them. Be oh yeah, yeah, if something is in the Bible that they feel helps their greed out. Yeah, that, like that, uh, if you don't work, you don't eat. Well, the Republican Congress doesn't work, but they sure eat quite well on the taxpayers' money. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They don't work. They, they just repeal and obstruct. Well, it's very funny that a few they, times a, a month. A lot of those guys that uh, are in government and everything, living off the uh, the uh, the pig, the tits of big government. Yeah, they're always complaining about you know dependency, food stamps. It makes you dependent. They're not dependent. When they are dependent. They're not dependent. When they collect that a uh, hundred billion dollars in corporate welfare that I read before, yeah. or at the beginning of the show, and that and if you were real 
about cutting government, you would start there. You wouldn't start with food stamps. You know, yeah, look at all the Pentagon, look at all the defense budget money on weapons that, that were never used. Just co never collecting needed. dust. Yeah. We're never needed, never going to be used. Yeah. And when we went to Iraq, we didn't have enough bullets. We didn't have enough, uh, 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 what was the Kevlar vest? Yeah, Kevlar. We yeah. didn't have any, uh, the Humvees weren't uh, 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 structured to to uh, 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 prevent IEDs well, don't, blowing them up well, and etc. Don't et forget Dick Cheney's profit going into his profit, pro pocket was more important well, than the Halliburton, lives, Halliburton, yeah, than the lives of the troops yes, over there in Iraq and Afghanistan. A hundred dollars to clean to a it. duffel bag yeah. of clothes. Dirty water given to them. Yeah. And, and what did Mr. Donald Rumsfeld say? Well, you go to war with the army you have. No. What did Patton say? You go to war with the best army. And we are the best, he said. Oh, well, not anymore. Well, at that time. We can't even win uh, 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 wars with the uh, little countries. You no. Know. As prophecy says, the United States won its last war they didn't, in World War II. They didn't beat North Korea. They did not beat Vietnam. Vietnam. North Vietnam. Oh, I think they, what was that, uh, 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 Panama? They think they beat Panama. Well, that's a one war. Well, guerrilla fighters in Central America are smart, just like in in Colombia. They use the uh, the jungle as their fortress. They 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 camouflage in a camouflaging way. They know how to hide. Yeah, but the point of all of that is that yeah. these wars were not for freedom. They were not for winning. That's no, for corporate profit. Were, that's correct. They were to get rid of the old inventory and build up the new. Yeah, they were. They were. They As Schmedley Butler said, General Schmedley Butler, war is a racket. These politicians uh, made a hell of a lot of money on these wars, war profiteering, but the flag wavers, all the imbeciles out there that vote Republican, the flag wavers. Uh, the, the morons that have the American flag on their the antenna of their pickup trucks and their SUVs and all the stupid bumper stickers they have on the back. These people continue to vote Republican and Republicans will continue not to have their best interests at heart and the suckers will just keep on believing Fox News. What can I say? Uh, Amer Americans are the laughing stock of the world. They have this cloak of religiosity. But it's a but it's a cult. It's not really. It's a cloak. It's not really the Bible. They don't believe it really. They don't understand it really. They're too lazy to open it up. They'd like to thump on it though. And their pastor. You're not going to heaven. And their pastors, a lot of them really do not know what's in the Bible either. Correct. Anybody who talks to you about the traditional concepts of heaven and hell doesn't know their Bible. Because those traditional concepts are not there. Right. Okay? Okay, let's finish. And there's more, but I will hold my peace. Yeah. What kind of politician would make cruel spending cuts while preserving tax breaks for the wealthy. Governor Christie of New Jersey. Of course, who else? Is that kind. The man that won re-election when he got his, even though he got his ass kicked during the two debates by Barbara Bono, the Democratic opponent. I, I, I am still bewildered in which flabbergasted, or whatever you word you want to call, uh, as to how this man got reelected. <laughs> they, I know they made him out to be a Hurricane Storm Sandy hero, just like they made G.W. Bush a 9/11 hero. Oh yeah, people are stupid in, in my state. He is making the rich richer at the expense of everyone else. Well, he's a Republican. It doesn't shock me.
He has bullied through cuts for women's health, environmental safeguards, health programs, legal services to the poor people. Well, he closed food pantries and the food they give the poor is, is really garbage. He even closed them. He has dumped mountains of paperwork on public school teachers, which takes away energy needed for effective teaching. Plus he wants them to get paid less money. Yeah. He wants to increase... And have more kids in the class. He wants to increase their workload and pay them less. But I'm sure when Chris Christie first started as, as a lawyer, a federal prosecutor, was it? I'm sure he was very well compensated. But it's, yeah. His policy of blocking solutions to climate change made the devastation of Superstorm Sandy worse than it might otherwise have been. He said no to windmill generators. His attitude is sure to intensify the damage of future storms. The incessant refrain from the right wing calls for abolition of regulations. Christie is squarely in their camp. As a result of insufficient regulations, many children nationwide have neurodevelopmental disabilities, including autism, speech, language delays, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. It is unbelievable that Christie remains popular. It is unbelievable. Who, who is this person's name? I agree. It was cut off. Somebody cut it off on me. Oh, I am, um, I am f in full agreement. I don't understand how a man with a lousy track record when it comes to the, uh, the mainstream of New Jersey and, and, and a man who did so poorly in the debates because Barbara Bono is all over him, like, oh, forget it. I mean, she was fantastic. Like a and barnacle on a ship. He won by a landslide. Two-thirds. Maybe this is why I, I run into many what seems to be brain cell deficient humanoids in my, well, in my everyday walks of as life. As God says. Stupid people. He puts the basis of people into those positions. Okay. Well, we know why uh, God tried to bump off the human race with the great flood. And, uh, you know, and uh, I would have flooded the world, too. Well, he didn't bump them off. What he did was... He wasn't too happy about it. Yeah, because they were moving too fast towards the end time. So, therefore, he just got rid of them, and they'll be back at another time when they won't have that influence. From the devil. Do you think? Do you think that's why the li the great library of Alexandria, Egypt, was burnt down, and all the Greek scientists yes. uh, to dumb us down? Was it Archimedes? Uh, Archimedes. Yeah. Yes. The, all all the Greek uh, inventions and scientific the discoveries. Great breakthroughs. Breakthroughs were in that library, and it, it, it was destroyed. Same thing with the Tower of Babel. Just think about okay. it, if it wasn't destroyed. And Da Vinci, if he if he wasn't hiding from the Catholic Church, and Galileo, and Copernicus, and uh, like in other words, if Da Vinci and that li library in Alexandria, Egypt, were studied and protected, we would be way ahead right now or in, te in technology. If Mr. Da Vinci did not have to waste his time on implements of war yeah for the princes or if uh the powers that be went with nikolai tesla instead of thomas edison well they did in a sense i mean nikola tesla was alternating well, current they knew what tesla was capable of okay they knew it well b because mr whatchamacallit it was westinghouse against thomas edison so the jp morgan was involved in that yes the money it was the money man and uh, Thomas Edison had all of this. He used to go around. <coughs> he used to go around electrocuting animals. Nice guy. To, to say, this is the ultimate current. This is dangerous. This is kill everybody. Uh, against Nikolai Tesla. Yeah, That's Ed what that was. Edison. Edison out. was direct current. You know what I mean? But, but he wanted a 
electrical thingy every couple of blocks or but, something but, and but move the electricity directly to your home. Edison uh, uh, sided with uh, J.P. Morgan to sell electricity and Tesla said Free. sell it sell it it's all around us free baby free free my invention will supply electricity for free yeah. to the world because it is all around us and that's why edison made the he even electrocuted an elephant he had a traveling electric chair this is how he you know made westinghouse and nikolai tesla's way of doing electricity as the bad guy that's how they did it it's like, um, I mean, they got alternating current in the end, but that's, that's Thomas like, Edison was the big boy. It's like when Not the, the invention of uh, um, cable TV and 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 Free TV. and drinking water, spring water for sale. <laughs> My grandfather flipped out in both cases. He goes, "What? Pay for pay for water? It's water. You got to be kidding me! I ain't paying for water. You know what? In a lot of ways, he was right." about getting mad at, at, at that, you know, I mean, taking basic necessities, basic things that are around us for like millions of years and suddenly charging for it. Well, that's it. It's, it's taking stuff from the, the commons and privatizing it. That's what that's all about. Yeah, like, like the, the scumbag CEO of Nestle's yeah. Saying that uh, people do not have a right to drinking water. No, but he does. But he has a right to own. To bottle it. To own the world's drinking water, aquifers, bottle it, and sell it to you. Right. Oh, you see how, how, how hypocritical capitalists and uh, right-wing capitalists, conservatives really are? Everything they do is so hypocritical. You know and what I mean? And self-centered. And self-centered. And, and greedy. Me, me, me. Yeah, it's get, like get, get. it's like a, a a horrible monster spoiled child that takes a tantrum mm -hmm. because they make him share his toys with his cousins or whatever, and you know, and he he wants everything for himself. You know, that's what they they're like, the Republican Party. Yeah. Did you see that banner up there uh, that that says um, this is the appropriate symbol for Republicans, and it had the the symbol from chaos. Remember Get Smart? Instead of the elephant being the symbol of Republicans, they had the symbol of chaos. You know, the vulture perched on top of the world. Where was that? That's Facebook? Not, it's not progressive discussions. Well, I wasn't on progressive discussions. I'm on Facebook. Well, that is, that, that is a Facebook group. But I don't go to that. Yes, group. you I do, don't. because you post things on progressive discussions. So you no, must go there. No, I do not. I post things on my page. You mean when your wall comes up? Right. There. Then. Oh, okay. So you, yeah. you go you go by way of what you find on your wall. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Are you finished with this article? I'm done, man. Right, I'm so done. We are done. I'm disgusted. Thank you for joining us for the uh, the uh, happy festivus for the rest of us and pagan Christmas weekend of 2013 it's been very hard-hitting and invigorating to say the least excellent show and uh, please when you go online listen to the Christmas slide by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman listen to the Christmas slide and uh, you'll learn about the season you know the true meaning of it and what it's all about um, you don't even have to, you just go to Google and type in Mega Life 21, The Christmas Lie. That's all you have to do. Uh, and you can also type in Mega Life 21 and see everything we've done. Uh, we're going to go now to promo, which we are putting this time at the end of the show. But anyway, say so long to these, uh, these pagan worshippers that are, uh, are so obsessed with receiving presents and and, and materialism. You mean the, the people who want to put Christ in Christmas when he was never there? He was never in Christmas <laughs> to begin with. Only pagan, man-made, pagan traditions are there. Saturnalia, Brumalia! That's right. Let's have a ball, baby! Watch and listen to the Christmas lie. I mean listen to the Christmas lie. Hey. Say so long to these jabronis. So long, jabronis. Yeah, I think we'll see you, uh... 
after Christmas. Yeah, the New Year's Eve. Uh, what date does oh, it fall no, on? Well, what, well, wait, wait a minute. What date does New Year's Eve fall on? 28, 29, 31, uh, about Tuesday or so? Not next Tuesday. Yeah. It's Tuesday after Christmas, uh, New Year's Day. Not right? this Tuesday coming. All right, so we'll see Whenever. you. Whenever. Look at the calendar. Yeah, look at the calendar. We'll see you during the hour, uh, I guess, Happy New, Happy New Year's 2014 uh, special weekend. All right. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet.